Rollin White's patent changed the world, and nobody knows his name. In 1850, loading a gun meant juggling loose powder, lead balls, and percussion caps. It took a lot of coordination, and it took time. Even this Colt's revolver, a marvel that could shoot five rounds in rapid succession, took several minutes to reload. Precious minutes spent reloading were fatal in times of war. In 1855, a man named Rollin White patented a new gun design. He incorporated the European novelty of self-contained ammunition into a revolver. It looked a lot like the guns made by his employer, Samuel Colt. But White's design involved a complicated loading system that proved too troublesome. Samuel Colt scoffed at White's invention. He told Rollin White there was no future in cartridge ammunition. White's patent seemed destined to fade into obscurity. In 1855, two other enterprising businessmen were busy making their mark on the firearms industry. Daniel Smith and Horace Wesson had just perfected the Smith & Wesson lever pistol like the one clutched by this soldier. Buoyed by its success, the partners sold their enterprise to Oliver Winchester, and they risked it all on an even more ambitious project, a revolver that would shoot cartridge ammunition. It was a courageous idea, the same idea that had been scoffed at by Samuel Colt. But the partners forged ahead and developed a prototype gun, a simple design that allowed the shooter to manually load cartridges into the rear of the cylinder. With this gun, reloading seven shots took mere seconds. There was only one problem. Part of Smith & Wesson's new gun had already been patented by Rollin White. White agreed to grant Smith & Wesson an exclusive license to his patent for $500 and a royalty of 25 cents payable for each gun produced. The catch? Rollin White had to defend the patent against anyone who violated it. Smith & Wesson's little gun caught on, and their near monopoly turned them into millionaires. Defending the patent against violators bankrupted Rollin White. In violation of his own patent agreement, Rollin White also got into the business of producing guns, and like all of the other patent violators, he was forced to turn over his guns to Smith & Wesson. White's 1870 petition for relief was passed by Congress and vetoed by President Grant. White died penniless in 1892. In all of this, one question remains. Who was Rollin White? <laughs>